It's time to take a look at my absolute favorite Irishman, Rick O'Shea. Get it? Like ricochet? Rick O'Shea? <laughs> it's what the boys would call a mom joke, a really bad pun. Anyway, let's take a look. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Boards with yet another Crokinole Skills Tip video. If you'd like to see these all in one place, we've put them on a single page of our website and we'll pop a link to that down below. Maybe you can sit around on a Saturday night and binge watch or Crokinole Skill and Chill or I don't know, maybe uh, Croak Flicks and Chill? You think that'll catch? No, nah, it's not going to, never mind. Anyway, if you find this enjoyable, give us a like, a comment, a share, and as always, subscribe for more great Crokinole content. Some players call this a ricochet 20, others call it an angle in 20, and some just call it a boatload of fun. But this shot is just super satisfying when you can hit, and it is probably most impressive when the opponent's button is all the way out in the five and you manage to angle in for that super flashy 20. But honestly, it's basically the same shot. The angle stays the same. It's just your weight that you need to adjust based on where the opponent's button is sitting. As far as the angle goes, for the engineers out there and the analytical minds, what I'm told the angle you're looking for is 135 degrees. So basically, it's halfway between straight and a 90 degree turn. So that halfway in between is 135. That's the angle that you want to make between your shooter the opponent's button, and the center hole. Short of having some sort of a measuring device that you place onto the table, I think you'll find the next best thing you can do is just play with this. Just practice, flick away, find what works for you. That being said, there's a couple of things that you can do to help set yourself up for your practice sessions to really get a good solid grasp on how to go about making these ricochet 20s. For practice only, I want you to remove all but one of the variables. Now I've said it a number of times, one of the great things about Crokinole is there's different setups and scenarios each and every time you play, but for this I want you to go the opposite way and remove all but one variable. As we talked about, there are three points involved with this 135 degrees. There's your shooter, the opponent's button, and the center hole. The center hole obviously doesn't move. What I want you to do is find a way to consistently, for practice only, have that opponent's button in the exact same spot. So the one variable that you have left that you play with and adjust to find your way is the position of your shooter. Of course, the weight of your shot and where you hit the disc is gonna come in, into play as well, but by anchoring these first two variables, it's just gonna help your learning curve that much more. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this that I, and maybe you'll find your own way. The first one I'd suggest is, uh, last week we talked about the mulligan, it was a golf term. I, what I want you to do now is use another golf term where we're going to use a marker. Take an extra button and have it set on the board, and, but I want you to set it there just as another landmark to keep you more consistent with where you place that opponent's button. You wanna make sure it's not something that's going to be impacted by each one of your shots. So I've got it here, it's just touching that 510 line, and then I put my button halfway between, the other opponent's button, halfway between this marker disc and that peg. That way, I, I know to place it exactly there each time that I shoot. So now, I line up with my shooter. Other than the weight, that wasn't too bad. So now I can place this back in here. Now I know I just need to adjust a little bit with my weight. Now see here, we talk about this 135 degrees. With this shot, I just missed a little bit to the left. So now when I set this up again, I need to adjust where I shot from just a little bit to my left. So now we should be able to successfully now I said there were two ways that we were going to look at to do this. The second one, and I'll do this on the other side, I want you to use that 510 line. So this time the button's gonna be a little further away. So we're going to put the opponent's button so it sits right on the middle of that 510 line and just use your finger in between the quadrant line and the button, just something to roughly get it in the same spot. Now you may ask yourself, why not just put it on this tee? You'll find that's really tight to get your shooter past this peg. But if we come over here, just put a finger's width 
in between the quadrant line and that button, that is your starting point. That's the point that stays the same. And now, again, my weight was just a little bit off. So I set it here, get the finger width in between. So there's the first thing you can do on each side, find a way to keep that opponent's button position consistent so that you can learn to tweak and adjust the starting point of your shooter, how hard you're flicking, where you're hitting that button. But again, we're just removing some of those variables so to allow you to get more comfortable with your positioning, with your angle, to drain these awesomely fun Ricochet 20s. Now the other thing you can do, once you've got a handle on that, like I say, Crokinole sets up differently every time. So what I'd encourage you to do is practice all sorts of different distances away. So you can practice in a few different ways. One, you can practice up this side, so you're coming between these two posts. Then you can do the same thing on this side. You wanna be ambidextrous in that way that you can shoot up each side, but you can also practice them here up this middle set of pegs. And, and just play with that so you get used to it. It doesn't matter where on the board it is, you still want to create that 135 degree angle and learn to adjust your shooter so that you're nailing your favorite Irishman, Ricochet. Now go have heaps of Irish fun playing the greatest game on earth. I still need to adjust more to the left. You may need to edit some of this out. Woo! No, I'm not going on a diet. I believe that. All right. <clears throat> I can't remember what's coming next, so we're gonna... <laughs> The center hole, that never changes. That's always in the center of the board, as long as we built it. 